While the TV series has come up with some great morphers, weapons, suits, and zords, the only way we can interact with these things is the Bandai toy line. This is a blessing, but can also be a problem. While you see the Lost Galaxy team with the cool looking Quasar Sabers, the toy version is some dinky little dagger that sucks. But other times, the toy line made some of the boring stuff good. Power Cannon. I went with this one as my number 10 for the looks and function. As a collectible piece, the Power Cannon is a good choice. While the Die Ranger version is more show accurate, the US release is decent. It loosely capitalizes on the nerf craze of the 90s, where it let you shoot ranger colored orbs. It's one of the few toy weapons that actually shoot stuff, which got phased out in recent years. It's compatible with the Die Ranger sidearm, giving extra features and sounds. Dyer Ranger also had a limited edition Kiba Ranger orb made for it, so it makes the toy a little bit more of a collectible item. Thermal Blaster. These weren't used much on the show often. The toy version gave a lot of cool options to the gun. Its regular blaster mode had some lights and sounds. The attachment piece on the handle can come out and be slotted onto the battle booster port, making it like a sight. Then you get the battle booster mode, so you have access to the combo sounds that work with the extended barrel sounds. I highly suggest you get the thermal blaster to get better use out of the battle booster. Plus it works great for a light speed cosplay that's not common. Electro Booster. Sadly, this wasn't released in the US. I still don't understand why it wasn't. It gives you so much functionality to the Chrono Sabers. The Sabers themselves aren't all that great. You just have one side with sounds and lights. The other side is just an extra piece. With the booster add-on, you get the case and all the pieces that snap onto the main blade. The case is the best part of the set. On top of the combining gimmick, you get five new solo weapons that were for the whole team. I wish the show utilized them more, but at least you know what weapon is owned by who. If you can find this toy for a decent price, get it. Legacy Blade Blaster. I really love the Blade Blaster concept. It's a gun and a sword in one. You'd think this would be a more common sidearm for the show, but it's not done often. The Legacy version of it fixed all the major issues of the original toy. Even the Japanese version wasn't all that great. It's much larger than the original, which allowed it to have normal AA batteries, no more stupid nine volt. The blade is show accurate. I never minded it being rubber, but it being this crummy silver in the US and bright see-through red for the Japanese version made it look horrible. The best corrected error is the white barrel. Till this day, I don't understand why the barrel was changed to black. That just makes it look more like a real gun. I love the little dinosaur head detail on the top and the simple sleight of hand gesture for spinning the blaster to form the gun was perfect. It's a versatile weapon on the show and in toy form. I just hope we get a legacy Thunderslinger to complete the blade blaster. Drill Blaster. This was an interesting two-in-one gun, basically mini versions of two Zords. The detail on the toy was pretty impressive if you got the Japanese version. Large scale, everything worked, spin the body around and push the handle forward, the head would pop out. The heads could spin, but not motorized. Some fun sounds and lights for each side and a hidden compartment for those scanning chips. The only thing that sucked is it didn't come with a defender vest. Legacy Dragon Dagger. The newer version of the Dragon Dagger is an improvement over the original. The way it looks is the best thing about it. Every detail is filled out where the back on the original was left mostly unpainted. It's full size, so it's easier to hold and put on stands. The best addition was the sword impact sounds. New recordings of the classic dagger tunes, they don't match 100%, but they're perfectly fine. The mouthpiece switch is easier to push down while the older one was a bit harder to do. Adding the MMPR theme song was fine, but I didn't like that the G-Ranger lullaby song was removed for it. With legacy items that aren't called Zeo Gold Ranger, you can't go wrong with getting one. Brachio Staff. This one got on my list with it having four different element modes. The size of the staff isn't bad. It comes with a holster and a full belt for a kid. The attachment part for its combo with the Z-Rex blaster. The detail on the handle is really good. The head can rotate so Brachio could face your direction to talk. The end is spring-loaded so you can mimic when Tommy does the fire strike attack. Rescue Bird. It's individual weapons, the team's primary combo, and works with the sidearm parts. It's very similar to the Electro Booster. I'm really surprised that they went with a bird rather than an obvious choice of a dog. A lot of the solo weapons are pretty interesting, like the feet act as grabbers, the wings are like a sword, one piece is a mini fire extinguisher, then you have bird mode, which is a good way to display it in either sitting or in flying pose. I would say this and even the Electro Booster are worthy of being legacy items, good looks, good reusability for kids, 
and many ways to display it. Astro Blaster. If you get the Astro Blasters, the Quadra Blaster, and the Drill Saber from Japan, you have a lot of different types of weapon choices for the space team. Space's weapons are very versatile. In toy form, they look best in the Astro Blaster combo mode. The best of the bunch is definitely the Spiral Saber Blaster combo, which was sadly not released in the US. The blaster itself isn't too small. In fact, it's used on the show sometimes. I also think Ashley and Cassie's weapons look best combined. The only thing that lacked was sounds. Only the Astro Blaster has sounds. I would love a Legacy Astro Blaster and Spiral Saber to be made. Legacy Saba. I have to give my number one to Saba. It's perfect in every way. The look, it finally matches the show, unlike the original that added all the weird red stickers and lightning bolts, plus the nice speckle pattern. It's full scale with extending blade, motorized mouth for all the various phrases. The best thing of all, getting Tony Oliver back for the voice. The actors are the most important part of any collectible item. You make a $400 statue of Han Solo, I expect it to look like Harrison Ford, which is why I personally hate the legacy communicators. Fake voices are fake voices. I don't care how good it looks. When it comes to the toy line, I'm very picky to what I want. I'm not a person that just buys every season out there just because I love the series. There's many seasons I don't have anything from, like Tokuger and Juoger. The item has to do stuff along with looking good. You can have a super intricate transformation for a Megazord, but if it's missing paint really badly like the Mezodon Megazord, I'm not gonna want it. There has to be a balance to the item. What are your personal thoughts on PR items? Do you want them to have lots of things to do with them? or do you just care how they look on display? Do you want them to be show accurate or more basic versions? And if you have a suggestion on what future topic you'd like me to cover, leave a comment down below. Next week, I'll be covering the worst of the worst, bootleg Power Rangers slash Super Sentai toys. This is gonna be an interesting episode.